Hi everybody, Steven here. If you've never installed ESXi and you want to see how it's done, stick around, that's what I'm going to cover. See you in a bit. Hi everyone, thanks for sticking around. So in this one, uh, in the previous uh, video, we talked about what virtualization is. We talked about vCenter server, what that brings to the table. We said that it allows us to manage our hypervisors. Our hypervisors are where our virtual machines run, and the hypervisor in the vSphere environment is, is your ESXi server. So we need to set that up first. After we get that going, we'll get our vCenter server up and running, and then we'll play around with VMs. But those will be other videos. Let's focus right now on setting up ESXi. So let me switch over to my other screen right now. So what I've done is I've actually uh, popped in the ISO that I downloaded from the VMware site and I popped it inside my uh, server and I'm actually booting it. Uh, to let you know folks while this is booting up, uh, this is actually a VM that I'm installing it on. It's the same thing, I'm using VMware Workstation, but hey, technically you, you almost can't really tell to be honest with you. So just make download the media, make your bootable USB or bootable CD, whatever the case may be, pop it in your server, prepare your server so if it's a Dell machine, HP or whatever it is, you'll have to set up your local disk. The server that I have here that I'm booting with, um, I've got a 40 gig boot disk that I'm using and I've got another 200 gig disk there that I'll use for something else when we go to install vCenter. But for this video, we don't care about that one. So I'm just waiting for it to come up. We'll let it uh, come up. It'll take a few minutes for it to boot up, okay? So I may speed this up for you folks, all right? Okay, so you see that I'm actually installing ESXi. This is actually ESXi update uh, update one. Uh, so you got a welcome screen here. It says uh, it will install, it tells me here, uh, it will install on most host systems, but only systems on the compatibility guide are supported. So again, you got to make sure that your physical machine, your hardware is all supported on the hardware compatibility list from VMware, especially in your production. If you're in a lab environment, who cares, right? So I'm in a lab environment, I don't care. So great, I read that. I'm gonna hit enter to continue comes up ask you the end user agreement so you gotta read that you'll hit the f11 key to accept once you read it and accept it so i'm gonna hit f11 to continue and then i just wait and let it scan okay again this will take a few few seconds now it comes up it's scanning your disks so i've already got two disks in there you'll see the one that's highlighted in yellow is the 40 gig disk that'll be my boot disk uh, then i've got another disk 200 gig which i'll use later on anyways i'm not using that one now it doesn't really matter so again this is where you go back and you have to look at your physical server and make sure it's got a supported disk controller in there set up your raid you're probably going to have you know booting with like two disk raid one or something like that whatever the case may be um, so I'm just going to hit enter to continue because that's the one I want to boot from the one that's highlighted uh, in yellow so I'm going to hit enter on that it's going to ask me my keyboard layout pick your keyboard layout hit enter pretty easy type in your root password make sure it's nice and secure I'm going to type in whatever just uh, and then I'm going to hit enter to continue uh, then it says the installer is configured to install on that disk that first disk there the VM HBA 0 controller 0 target 0 LUN 0 um, it says this disk will be repartitioned. In other words, if there's any data there, goodbye. It's going to be gone, right? So I'm totally cool with that. I'm going to hit F11 and let it start, okay? So I hit F11. Oh, sorry, I hit F12. I hit F11, and there we go. It does its installation. Now, this will take a little while to install, depending on your server, uh, but we'll give this a few minutes. I'll probably speed this up. So uh, let me uh, go over here now. I'll probably speed this up for you folks. So we see here that it says it's installed successfully. Remove your installation installation media uh, before before rebooting. So I'm just going to hit enter the reboot, and then at that point it's going to reboot, and then it should come back up, uh, and we'll just give it a few minutes to start up. So. It's shutting down. So that was pretty easy. A couple of, you know, couple, you know, 
you know, hitting enter on the keyboard, a yes there, whatever the case may be, an F11, and away you go. So it's right now it's going to basically boot up ESXi. This will take a few minutes. So again, I'll probably speed this process up, uh, and then we'll come back right back. Okay, everybody, we are back. It didn't take too long to come up there, right? So you'll see, the, um, so it's booted up, my server's booted up. You see it's ESXi 8.0.1. Uh, it says it's got two Intel processors. I can't highlight this. It's got two Intel i9 processors. I got 16 gigs of memory, okay? That, that's to my server, okay? Again, we know it's a VM, but who cares, okay? Uh, so that's my server, okay? Now, this is called the DCY, the Direct Console User Interface. So I've got it up and running, but I still need to configure a couple of things here. So I can hit F12 if I want to shut down and restart, or I can hit F2 to customize. I'm going to hit F2 to customize, and then it's going to ask me to log in as root. And I'll type in the password that I set when I was doing my install, and I'll hit enter. Now that, now that I've done that, again, I could change my password. Uh, I'll talk about lockdown mode in another video. Uh, but I can configure my management network. This is basically the first thing you want to do. Uh, right now, it's defaulted for a DHCP address, and it grabbed one from my DHCP server. Maybe that's fine in your environment, but probably not. But you want to go in and configure your network, the management network. So I'm going to hit enter on that. Uh, I can look at my network adapters. I got two in here, and it picked the first one. Notice the first one, it's it's VMNIC0 and then VMNIC1. That's my VMNIC, those are my physical cards inside my server. So if you've got 10 cards in your servers, you'll see VMNIC0, VMNIC1, all the way up to VMNIC9, right? Um, so I got VMNIC0, so it picks the first card as your management. That's great. If it's not the one, then you pick the appropriate one for your management network, okay? I'm just going to hit escape because that's what I want. I want that one. I'm going to go back out. Uh, I can configure my VLAN. If this thing's on a VLAN, I can configure that. I'll talk about virtual switches and VLANs in an upcoming video because I can get pretty in-depth. Now, this is where I can set my IP information. So I'm going to go IP4. And right now, <clears throat> I can disable IP4. Maybe I don't want to use IP4. I want to only use IP6. Great. So I can disable it. Or I could, um, by default, notice it says it's grabbing a DHCP address. I don't want that. I'm going to set a static address on this. And I'm going to give it 172.20.10.51, my subnet mask 255.255, and my gateway 172.20.10.10, and I'm going to hit enter. Great. I just set the IP. IP6 configuration, I can set that if I want. I don't care about IP6. I'm going to disable it. Okay. Um, again, if you've got IP6, you could set that up. I don't. My DNS configuration. Where's my DNS server? Uh, I can say uh, obtain it, uh, obtain it. The DNS server address is the same automatically, or I could actually use it, enter it manually. I'm going to put in my DNS server here. Uh, notice that I actually had it populated. It pulled it from my gateway. I've got a different one here, 172.20.10.10. Uh, alternate DNS server. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll leave that in there. It pulled that up from my gateway. Actually, you know what? I don't want it using that. And, my, and the host name on this, this host will be sa site a dash esxi dash 01 dot v class dot local. So you, you need to, before you get all this set up and playing with vSphere, you should have a DNS server set up. It's, it's important. You need to have um, forward and reverse lookup. So map out your IPs and stuff like that. So get all those because vSphere is very dependent on DNS lookups. We want good DNS. I, I, I see a lot of people, I'll use host files you'll have issues okay um so set up a good dns server right windows linux i don't care which one so anyways there's my uh, host name i got it called i called it site a-esxi-01.vclass.local that's my domain uh, i keep it similar to um, the classrooms that i teach in so this way i could you know do demos and stuff so i'm gonna hit enter dns suffix uh again uh, my suffixes, I'm going to type in vclass.local, and then I'm going to hit enter, and that's it, okay? Uh, I'm going to hit escape, and then it says, uh, you want to apply the changes and reboot, um, apply changes and reboot the host, I'll say yes, right? Um, and it's restarting the host right now. There we go. Sorry. There we go. So this may take a few, uh, a few minutes. 
So it's shutting down and it's rebooting. So we'll let that thing go through again. Like I said, it'll probably take a few minutes to come up and then we'll come right back to that. And I'll probably speed this process up. So we can see it actually didn't take that long to come up. So uh, you'll see here, uh, it's got my new static address and my direct console user interface is right here. Let's just jump into that DCUI one more time, just to show you a couple of things. I'm gonna go log in with my root password. I, I didn't show you this before. So we already configured our management network. I could restart my management network. Maybe I'm doing troubleshooting, test the network, whatever. Uh, I can do network restore options. Maybe something's happened and I, messed up I can restore that configuration honestly I've never really had to do that you can configure your keyboard again you know default I've got to set to US troubleshooting options I want to show you that I'll probably cover this in a separate video but I can enable the SXI shell so I could actually log into the shell here and do troubleshooting I can enable the SSH server so I can remotely log in and, and do commands um, I can modify the shell timeout modify the DCUI, that's the screen we're in now, um, timeout, and then restart management agents if I wanted to. So these are a couple of troubleshooting options you might use. I'll probably do a separate video on these, but anyway, just wanted to point them out. I'm gonna hit escape. I can view system logs. I can look at my syslog, VM kernel log, fig, a whole bunch of stuff from here if I want to. Probably I'll cover that in a separate um, troubleshooting video. I can view support information over here on the right and then I can reset the system if I want to, right? Um, so the direct console user interface allows you to do a lot of these things, and that's pretty much about it. But you don't see like create a virtual machine. You don't see that there, right? So this is basically just a console and you just kind of like forget about it. So a physical box, this will be in a data center somewhere and you don't really need to touch this to tell you the truth. So, um, so from here, I'm gonna use the host client to connect and then uh, we'll prepare the, uh, we'll configure the host a little bit more, all right? Okay, everybody, um, so we've got our host up and running. I'm going to use the fully qualified domain name and connect to that host. So I'm just gonna type in site a-esxi-01.vclass.local. I'm gonna hit enter. And you notice you get this potential security risk. By default, it's using self-signed certificates. You could change that probably in a corporation, you're gonna probably do that. Uh, so it's coming up and saying, hey, you know what? This is a self-signed certificate. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna say advance. I'm gonna say, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna accept the risk and continue. And this is called the host client, the VMware host client for your ESXi host. So I'm gonna log in as root and I'm gonna type in my password and I'm gonna log in. Now it's asking, do you want to join the uh, customer VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program? I'll leave that up to you if you want to or not. There are some benefits for that, uh, for Skyline, for diagnostics and stuff like that. I'll let you folks read that through. It's up to you. I'm just going to say, I'm not going to join here. This is a lab environment. I don't want to send false data and all that crap uh, since I'm in a lab environment here. Um, so this is basically my host right now. Um, and you basically, I can click on getting started with vCenter. I can register VMs or create virtual machines. Uh, I'll show you that a little bit later on. I can sh shut it down, I can reboot it. Uh, let's look at actions under my actions here. Uh, again, I can do a lot of this stuff from here. I can enter maintenance mode. Uh, we'll talk about maintenance mode later on, but I can enable my SSH if I want to or enable the, the, the ESXi shell. Remember we saw that in the direct console user interface. You could do a lot of that uh, stuff from here, right? Um, okay, so uh, what we want to do is we want to configure something else here. Uh, one of the main things would be uh, to set up um, your uh, network time protocol, NTP, right? So uh, again, from here, I can go in my manage. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about these other, uh, you got advanced settings here, you can set your auto start for any VMs and stuff like that, swap partitions, whatever. Uh, we'll talk about that stuff later on when we get into storage. But I just wanna set up my date and time. I can say enter my NTP or my precise time protocol. Uh, um, I'm just gonna use NTP over here 
precise time as if I was like, maybe this is a server on the stock trader's floor where every microsecond counts. That would probably be a good candidate for that. I don't care in my environment. I'm just going to go NTP. You can say manually configure the date and time of the host, which is not really a good idea. Uh, time synchronization is very important. So I'm going to say use NTP. Now the service, does it start and stop manually? Does it start and stop it on port usage? I'm going to say start and stop the NTP server with service, sorry, with the host. And here's my list of NTP servers. Sorry, let me, zero.ca.pool.ntp.org. Um, and I'll specify another one, the one dot ca dot pool dot ntp dot org. These are Canadian ones, so yeah, that's good enough. And I'm going to save that. All right. Um, at that point, I can go to services, um, and I can actually look at my services here. Let's uh, see. Here's my NTP service. Notice it stopped. Okay. So let's start that service. And we see it started right now. By the way, I just want to point out something. Notice the direct console user interface. It's a service that runs. Interesting. So technically, you could disable that if you wanted to. Hmm. Uh, so if you wanted to lock things down, make things a little bit more secure, that's a possibility. But I'd be very cautious on doing that. I'll talk about lockdown modes and all that kind of stuff in another video. Um, but that's basically it. We now have our ESXi server up and running. This is how I manage it. Again, I'm managing it directly using this. Now, generally in, in a production environment, you're probably going to be using vCenter server. So what I'm going to do is I just deployed one ESXi server. I'm going to deploy two more. And then in my next video, we'll actually deploy our vCenter server and we'll get things all set up and going and ready to start creating VM. So I'm going to walk you through this like from the beginning to the end, so to speak. So Anyways, if you stuck around this long, I really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. That would be really beneficial. Um, it'll help me provide content. Without subscribers, there's no, uh, there's no content. And if you liked the video or found it entertaining, hit that thumbs up. Thanks again, and see you in the next video. Next one will be installing vCenter Server. Thanks. Bye now.